Now for this same problem, suppose they had asked us how many atoms of carbon in five grams of glycine. Rather than working this out from scratch, what can we say from our previous approach and what do we need to change? Because notice that this question is pretty similar to this question. Everything up to the end, we, we just need to change the type of the fractions from two atoms of both to uh, two atoms of carbon. So what's the answer going to be? Mm, no change. Yeah. So this would still be the answer. All right, so we can save ourselves a lot of time in this case. Um, so this point, this was the point that told us how many molecules we had. Mm -hmm. At this point, we knew how many molecules we had, but each molecule has the same number of carbons as of oxygens. So if we know how many oxygens there are, we know how many carbons there are. The number of oxygens should be the same as the number of carbons. Okay, so we knew that this was going to be uh, the same answer in this case. So that's right, this was the only uh, change that we had to make, good. Well, how about if they asked us how many atoms of hydrogen are in glycine? So we would change from this to uh, five atoms of hydrogen. So would the answer still be the same as before? Yeah. No. So now we have to go through the calculation again. Okay, good. And suppose they'd asked us how many atoms of nitrogen. We can see that every molecule, well, I didn't, uh, I should have written it like this. So we can see that every molecule of this has one atom of nitrogen. So actually, you don't even have to put these into your calculator. Now they won't change the answer. Um, so who do we have the most atoms of? Hydrogen. And then who? Uh, carbon and oxygen. Yeah, and then nitrogen. In fact, we have twice as many carbon as nitrogen, and five times as many hydrogen as nitrogen. Okay, good. How about if I asked you how many total atoms are in five grams of glycine? So what's the answer to the question? Ten. Now, let's see. That's not the answer to this question. Because, after all, um, should this be a big number or a small number? Big number. Yeah, the number of atoms in 5 grams of glycine, that's going to be huge. It's not just going to be 10. Yeah. So you were on the right track, but 10 can't be the answer. 10 is only just one step to working it out. Okay. What do we need to change here to deal with this? Yeah, we need to change this conversion ratio. Do we need to change the bottom or do we need to change the top?
or both. Do we need to change the bottom or the top or both? Now, start again from scratch. So we're going to keep all our previous work, right? We're keeping the previous work. So what should I put on the bottom here? All right, so we're not really changing that. This is the same, although maybe the number might change. The number might change, but the units aren't going to change. Now, what units should I put on the top? Good, although we probably shouldn't say atoms of this because it's really a molecule. Maybe we should just say, what are our target units? Yeah? Atoms of C2 uh, and Lubosium. Maybe we should just say atoms. Just atoms in this case. I told you that we should always use, uh, we should always say what the substance is. But in this case, I don't, uh, maybe we won't put in the substance. Or maybe we should call this total atoms. Total atoms. All right, now what is the equivalency between these two? What numbers can I put on the top and the bottom so these, the top and the bottom are equivalent here? Now we actually don't want to use 6 times 10 to the 23rd because that refers to moles. But we don't have any moles here. We don't have any moles. Um, so you actually, you know, you almost had it. Let's say I put 1 down here. What is the total number of atoms in one molecule of C2H5O2N? What is, that? what is the total number of atoms in one molecule of C2H5O2N? What number do I have to put up here to make these equivalent? What is the total number of atoms in one molecule of C2H5O2N? You almost got that right, except there's really no reason to mention 6 times 10 to the 23rd because this has nothing to do with moles. This has nothing to do with moles. This is just one molecule, not one mole. which is, uh, ten. yeah, I think you'd already come up with that number 10, right? You'd already come up with the number 10, but 10 is not the answer. 10 is the conversion equivalency. 10 is the number we put in here for our equivalency. So there's not 10 total atoms in five grams, there's 10 total atoms in one molecule. Mm -hmm. So uh, one molecule here, so that's where we put in the 10. Uh, one molecule here is the 10, and now we would do the calculation. Now we would do the calculation and get the answer. Okay, so notice, um, how many atoms of carbon are in here? How many atoms of hydrogen? How many atoms of oxygen? How many atoms of nitrogen? How many total atoms? In one molecule. Okay, so this is really similar to the calculations we did before. So before we had things like two atoms of carbon in one molecule. or five atoms of hydrogen, or two atoms of not oxygen, or one atom of nitrogen, well, that also corresponds to 10 total atoms. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.